So we're going to look at implicit and logarithmic differentiation. I will take specific questions in the second half of this. What I want to do is see if by going over this I'm not answering your questions for you and I don't want to do your homework for you because that gives you less practice. But I can try and clone some similar questions if I'm lucky. How are you all on the chain rule? Because the chain rule is fundamental, fundamental, fundamental. Now, if you're a little shaky on the chain rule, I'll end up reviewing it as part of this anyhow. The other thing that I found for me, my brain worked better if I talked myself through these. And so you're going to hear me verbalize how I do a lot of these. Implicit differentiation, all that means is what if I can't get the y by itself? and I still want to find the derivative with respect to x. I have to derive implicitly. I have to imply what's going on. So here is a great example of a classic implicit differentiation question here. Could I get the y by itself? In this case, I could. Uh, minus 5 divided by 2 square root plus or minus. But I'll just show you that this one will work anyhow. You're going to put your phones away or at least glare at them minimally. I'm Thank you. I'm waiting for the buzz at the top table. Okay. Stop buzzing. So, what if I want, to, and the heading should really say, I guess, um, let's move this down a tiny bit. Find dy by dx. There are two notations here. Nick, you can go. There are two notations. There is the uh, y prime notation and Leib which is uh, sort of what Newton did, although he did a little different. And then there's Leibniz's dy dx notation. I am more comfy with the y prime notation for this method because it makes the algebra easier. Otherwise, I lose track of all the d's and things. So we're going to find the derivative of this. How are we going to do that? We're going to find the derivative one term at a time. What's the derivative of 2x cubed? Talk me through it. Stop. Talk me through it. What do you do first? Now, believe it or not, you're doing the chain rule. You're starting on the outer function, which is the cubed, and you're dealing with it first. And you're saying, I know the rule for a cubed. It's move the exponent down to the front. Rewrite what's inside, which is an x. Subtract one from the exponent. And so you would go 6x squared, but it's actually the chain rule. Look up, look up, look up, look up, times the derivative of x. Except what is the derivative of x with respect to x? You were doing the chain rule all along when you were taking the derivative of that. You just didn't know that because the derivative of x is just 1. But you were always starting on the outside, rewriting what was inside, times the derivative of what was inside. And that's my verbalization of the chain rule. Start on the outside, do that, rewrite what's inside times the derivative of what's inside and keep going on down the chain. So it really is times x prime, except what's x prime? 1. I'm going to leave that there and then cross it out just to let you know that we did actually do that. What's the derivative of 2y squared? It's going to be the same procedure. We move the exponent to the front. There was already a 2 there. I'm going to get 4. I'm going to subtract 1 from the exponent. I rewrite what's inside times the derivative of what's inside. What's the derivative of y prime? Not 1. So what's the derivative of y? Not 1. The derivative of y is y prime, or dy dx. This is why I like the prime notation. What's the derivative of 5? So do I need to write that? No. Now I'm going to get rid of that stupid 1, which I never should have written in the first place because it looks like a prime. And I'm going to get rid of that. This is what we have. And we want to find y prime. How to get y prime by itself. And this is where those of you that are in physics with me, this should be old hat formula manipulation now. You've probably found you're able to rewrite calculus equations in your head a lot better than some of your peers that aren't in physics. How to get the y prime by itself? So I'm going to get this. 6x squared over 4y that equals y prime. Now, that's not what they would show as their answer because I can tidy this up. Certainly, there's a fraction I can reduce. So it's 
That's what it would say. That's what implicit differentiation says. It says, look, if you can't get the Y by itself, or in this case, if you're too lazy to get the Y by itself, go one term at a time. When you're taking the derivative of X, what's the derivative of X with respect to X? One, so we never bother writing it. I did just the once to let you know, though, we are being consistent, Linnea. We are doing the same thing over and over. And, oh, and uh, take the derivative with respect to Y. What's the derivative with respect to Y? Y prime. Write it. Then at the end, isolate the Y prime. Does the X um, always equal 1? The derivative of X yeah. always equals 1. I got to be, not the oh, X always equals yeah, 1. In other words, what's dx by dx? Isn't that the same thing over itself? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. If you want to write it in Leibniz's notation. Or what's x prime? 1. Yeah. Why is that? Because the derivative of all is also the slope. So if you look at this graph and you ask, what's the slope of that graph? Believe it or not, it's 1. So there's all sorts of ways where these link to stuff. We, it has to be consistent and match stuff we already know. Let's do another one. Let's do a tougher one. Four has two y's in it. A little tougher. I did a Google search for implicit differentiation worksheets, and I found about five of them. And then I did a Google search for logarithmic differentiation worksheets, and I found about five more of them. I haven't proofread them. I'm just kind of winging this on the fly. So here we go. I would consider this first one for implicit differentiation difficulty, C minus, C plus here. What makes it a C plus? Two y's. But are there any funky functions in there? This really isn't too ugly a one to do. Here we go. What's the derivative of 4x squared? What's the derivative of 2y cubed? 6y squared y prime, or dy dx. Plus. What's the derivative of 4y? The 4 stays where it is. What's the derivative of y? y prime. Now what do I want to get by itself? y prime. Physics 12s. Are you ready? How many y primes do I have? Two. How many would I prefer? One. It would be really cool if there was a grade nine. Are you serious? Is that why you snuck that in, Mr. Duke? Oh, heck yeah. If there was a grade nine mathematical operation that I could pull out of my back pocket, you two are going, huh? My physics 12s are going to say, what can I do now? GCF. There's a Y prime and everything on the right. I'm in your class. These two are not. Oh. <laughs> the world doesn't revive, revolve around you. We're doing gravity. You're not the black hole at the center of our universe. Where everything revolves around. So I would write this. And this is why I prefer the Y. For this, I prefer the Y prime notation over the dy dx because I'm always worried that the dy dx, I'll think the over, is actually a fraction that can be divided and I can move those around. I don't want to do that. So it's going to be uh, 6y squared plus 4. How would I get the Y prime by itself? Divide over 6y squared Yep. And I'll have 8x all over. 6y squared plus 4. Now, I also notice there is a 2 in everything. In fact, maybe on this line, before even starting, I should have gone divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, because I also am willing to guarantee that if this was a textbook question, they would not have that as the answer, because that is not a fraction in lowest terms. They would factor a 2 out from the top and a 2 out from the bottom. And so they would write this as 2 bracket 4x all over 2 bracket 3y squared plus 2. Then they would cancel out the 2s, and you would have 4x over 3y squared plus 2. I should have caught that there was a GCF at the very beginning and factored it out or canceled it out. So what if the question said, find the slope when x equals 2? Well, this is the derivative 
I would put a 2 in for x. However, the reason I can't make these questions up is I would also need to know the y coordinate that went with x equals 2, which means I would have to go back here and plug in x equals 2 and solve for y. And this is a cubic equation, and I need to get up my quadratic, no, sorry, my uh, cubic solver. So earlier I said to you, making these ones up off the fly, I can do the equations and the derivatives, but I know one of the questions that you'll probably see on your test will be a tangent line question, but I'm hoping that in some of the worksheets that I quickly downloaded, there'll be a good tangent line question. Let's go find one. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do uh, eight. Eight, I think, would be a good implicit level uh, that's that's got a good B plus A minus. Now, what makes it that? More than one Y, and I'm seeing a bit of a product ruley thingy here too. A Y times an X, as opposed to number four, where we didn't have more than one variable in any one term. If I wanted to kick it up even more, I could bring in something like this, like number ten. We'll try that one as well, maybe. But I'll try and or I could bring in a trig function. But for now, let's try number eight, just to make sure we're on the same page. Sorry, Linnea, you asked me, and I kind of ignored you because it's a habit. What did you say? <laughs> um, I had said this would be an example, or a tangent line question. You had asked me if I could do one like that or something. Is that what you said? It's a normal line. Yeah, normal line tangent. Yeah, we'll, get, we'll try one like that. I can't make those up cold turkey, but I think I, think I recall downloading some last night. Yeah, I don't want to do your homework for you. You need. You, I want you to be able to do the practice yourself. I've already done the question. I'm so proud of you. Um, here we go. <laughs> right. Very proud. I've never taught you before, have I? See, you've missed out on all the self-esteem damaging that I normally do. It's terrible. What was your name again? Ray. Ray. How have I? You're in calculus, and you didn't do physics. But it's possible to do both if you're, anyways. Okay. Um, Ray, talk me through this. Derivative of the first term, please. <laughs> Good. And be very meticulous because it's very easy to make dumb mistakes here. Derivative of the second term. Uh oh. Product rule. Yes? So I talk myself through it. The way I do it is re, whoop, plus sign, rewrite the first term derivative of the second term. The derivative of y squared is going to be 2y times y prime. I typically put a dot between the two y's just so that later on I won't see y, y and make that a y squared because I'm stupid that way. Plus, so here's the product rule. Look up, Linnea. Look up, Linnea. Don't write this down. Just watch. So this is a product, something times something. So rewrite the first term derivative of the second term, the derivative of y squared is 2yy y prime, plus derivative of the first term, what's the derivative of x? Ah, rewrite the second term. I'm not going to put the one in front, but there is an invisible one there. <laughs> Equals. Product rule again with more exponents. Rewrite the first term. I'm going to call the first term 5x cubed times the derivative of the second term times 3 y squared y prime plus derivative of the first term. I called the first term 5x cubed. What's the derivative of 5x cubed? Times rewrite the second term. There. What am I trying to find? y prime. How many y primes do I have? Two. How many would I prefer? One. Get them all to the same side and get everything else to the other side. Um, I think the easiest is going to be to move this one there and to move that there. But you could also move them to the other sides. If you're ever doing a question and you notice your answer and the back of the book's answer are the same, except wherever you have a positive, they have a negative. Wherever you have a negative, they have a positive. It's just that they moved it to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to write this as the 15x squared is going to drop down like a domino. The y squared is going to drop down like a domino minus 15x squared y cubed, and that's going to equal a little more room, Mr. Duck.
five. Wait a minute. I can tidy this up. I can tidy this up. Have I got a five and a three? What's that really if they're being multiplied? So I'm going to write it as 15. Then there's an x cubed, a y squared, and a y prime plus 15. Oh, no, 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 no. I already moved that over, Mr. Duick. I'm moving this over. Minus, see, too much room to make dumb mistakes. Minus a 2, an x, a y, and a y prime. And again, where all those y primes are, you can have a dy dx. dy by dx. How many y primes? Have I made any dumb mistakes? Double check me. I think I'm good. Um, can you do. What, are you done with one? No. Oh. What am I trying to find? dy dx. Have I got the dy dx or the y prime by itself? How many y primes do I have on the right hand side? Two. How many would I prefer? It would be really cool if it was a grade 9 mathematical. Now, you may be good enough to go to the final answer now. If you're in my physics class and you've done so many of these, you might be able to, in your head, factor out the y prime, recognize what the bracket is, and just move it over. And Linnea is looking a little impatient. So we'll try that just for giggles because, you know, Linnea. Uh, so we'll say, okay, the final answer, the 15, the x squared, the plus y squared and the minus 15 x squared y cubed drops down like a domino. When I factor out the y prime, I'm going to have left behind a bracket that I would divide by. It's going to be a 15, an x squared cubed, a y squared, a minus, a 2, an x, and a y. That equals y prime. Except, folks, do you mind, instead of putting that equals y prime, can I put y prime equals, because that's how we're used to seeing the thing by itself on the left. Does that simplify at all? The 50, so when can I cancel? You ready? There's two questions that should go together. And the two questions that sh should go together when you're dealing with yucky fractions are this. Can I cancel? Have I factored? You can't have one without the other. Can I cancel? Can I factor? And what I really mean is, can I cancel? Is there a GCF? Is there a GCF in the top? Be obvious, it's math nine. Is there a GCF in the top? Um, There's an x squared and everything on the top? Is there a GCF on the top? Say no. Is there a GCF on the bottom? A y, I guess. But was there a GCF on the top? So you ready? Can I cancel? Does it factor? I can't cancel. That gets rid of what my math teacher always called cancel birds. People that, oh, wow, I want to cancel out that. and can No, no. Can I cancel? Have I factored? If I cannot pull out factors, I cannot cancel. Okay. Do you want to try one with a tangent line or a normal line or something like that? So it's going to require us to do a derivative okay. implicitly and then do something with it. Question? Question? Can you just do like um, one really okay. simple product? Rule? Like, okay, I'm confused on the product rule. Okay. So the product rule says this. Um, blah, 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 blah. I know what it is. I'm just trying to find, make up a nice example that will make it very, very clear. Okay. If you have this, u times v, and you want to find the derivative, you rewrite the first function, derivative of the second function, plus derivative of the first function, rewrite the second function. If I was going to give you an example with only x's, well, um, you know what, I'll give you one that's implicit because it's easier with implicit. In other words, if I had something like this, x to the fifth, y to the fourth, that's a product. What's the first function? x to the? What's the second function? So if I want to take the derivative of that, it would be Rewrite the first function. Derivative of the second function. 
So there's going to be a 4 moving to the front. The y we rewrite, subtract 1 from the exponent. And because it's a y, we would also say times the derivative of what's inside because it's the chain rule. Plus, so that is that. Derivative of the first function. Yes? Technically times the derivative of x, except what's the derivative of x? <laughs> but I'm telling you, you've been doing the chain rule since day one without realizing you were doing the chain rule since day one. Yeah. Rewrite the second function. Okay. And I, honestly, I talk myself through it to this day. I'm irritating to write tests next to. Actually, no, I learned when I'm writing tests, you'll see my mouth is closed, but I'm literally, you'll see my, my jaw moving and I'm talking to myself without my mouth open, walking myself through this. It worked for me. And again, rewrite the first term, derivative of the second term, times derivative of the first term, rewrite the second term. Chain rule, start on the outside, rewrite what's inside, times the derivative of what's inside. Oh, there's more stuff inside? Do the chain rule again. Rewrite what's, that's why it's called the chain rule. You want to try a normalization, normal tangent line-y thingy one? Okay, this might have had one. No. Nope. One of these did. Here we go. Uh, so here is uh, finding the slope of the curve at the given point. When I talk about the slope, what mathematical procedure are we really talking about? It begins with letter D. D E, D E R. It derivatives or slopes. Okay, what we're finding so far is generic slopes for this one. But now, if you told me an x and a y that worked in the original equation, I could tell you what the actual value of the slope was. So, the problem is I need to know an x and a y that work in the original equation. So we could go with. Um, you know what, let's do this one first. You should know what this is an equation of. What is x squared plus y squared equals 25 an equation of? Circle of radius? Five. Okay. Centered where? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. Okay, you did conics at the very beginning of the year. By the way, the reason you do them is it gives us some nice implicit derivatives where we can at least know that we're right. Okay, so there's our circle centered at zero, zero. Radius 5. We're going to find the slope at that. No, nope, not doing that yet. What are we finding? Sure. And for a curve, that means take the derivative. I could try and get the y by itself, but it would be yucky and a lot of work. Now, they've given me an x and a y that apparently work in this equation. I'm going to ignore those for a while. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the derivative. What's the derivative of x squared? 2x. Plus, what's the derivative of y squared? Yeah. No, it's not 2y. 2y times y prime. And that's good because that's what I want to get by itself. That's the actual derivative in just a second. Uh, equals... What's the derivative of 25? Zero. Zero. We're going to get the y prime by itself. How? I'm going to minus the 2x over. That's going to give me 2y, y prime. How would I get the y prime by itself? Yes? You did the physics with me at least, so you remember the formula manipulation stuff. Don't think I didn't have calculus in mind when I was showing you that stuff last year too. So y prime, the slope, apparently is going to be negative 2x over 2y. Can I cancel the 2s? Is there a 2 in everything? So here is the equation to calculate the slope of my original graph. which is what y prime is. It's the slope. It's just in this one, I had to do some math to get the y prime by itself afterwards. I derived implicitly. What x value do they want me to try? 
three. What Y value do you want me to try? Has Mr. Camozzi showed you the lovely vertical line notation where you put the uh, point right there and that's the way of saying we're going to substitute it in? Have you guys seen that yet? He doesn't know, so he didn't tell us it was for that. That's what it is for. So what am I going to put in for the X? No, what am I going to put in for the X? Oh, the X? Three. What am I going to put in for the Y? So I'm going to get this. The slope that we are interested in at 3, comma, negative 4 is going to be negative 3 over negative 4. It's going to be positive, and a heck, I'll make it a decimal, 0.75. Let's see if that looks right. I can graph this equation. It's going to be an implicit equation. It's x squared plus y squared. What did it equal? 25? because there was a negative in the front of the x. Oh, right. We're doing straight substitution. Don't get, right, don't get right. sloppy here, right? Uh, here I'm going to graph. I have some software that will let me graph this equation. All right. Uh, should be a circle of radius what? OK. There we go. I need to zoom out just a tiny bit. So let's see if I zoom out. I got chopped off a tiny bit there. What's the point we have here? 3 comma what? So ready? 3, negative 4. That's that point right there. Right there is the slope positive or negative. Looks like it's going uphill. It's positive. And that slope does look a little less than 1. I'm pretty sure we're right. We are right. We are right. What if they wanted the equation of the tangent line? I've just found the slope. Now find the equation of the tangent line. OK. All lines, lines, not curves, all lines look like this. y minus y1 equals m bracket x minus x1. You've seen or you've learned this is much nicer than y equals mx plus b, way better. In fact, honestly, I would ban y equals mx plus b from the curriculum. It's stupid. It's useless. It only, works, it only works if b is a nice whole number. If your y-intercept is a decimal, you're hooping. You can't graph it properly. This works as long as I can find one point. I can always find one point. This will work for anything. You ready, Ira? So the curve was that circle. We're going to find the equation of the line that will touch the graph right at 3 comma negative 4 and sh should have the same slope as what we've just done. It will touch the graph at 3 comma negative 4 because it's a minus y1 and a minus x1 so the signs flip. And I figured out what the slope was. What did I figure out the slope was? That's the equation of the tangent line. I could minus the 4 over if they want me to get the y by itself, but I only would if they made me. This is, to me, a much clearer, when I glance at that right away, I know, oh, that line goes through positive 3, comma, negative 4. Oh, and it's got a slope of 0.75. Let's find out. We're going to graph this one here, too. So y equals 0.75 bracket, 0.74, Mr. 5 bracket, x minus 3, close bracket, minus 4. I'll get the y by itself for the software. Nice big pen width. 3, negative 4. That sure looks like it. Now, Linnea is really concerned because she wants to be normal. She's not. No, I'm sorry. She wants a normal line. Is that what it was? I misunderstood your concern. I'm sorry. That was a pretty good... Come on, that wasn't bad. Okay, we want a normal line. Okay? 
So I, by the way, I can't do the normal line until I walk through these steps. First thing I got to do is they have to give me some points on the line, and I have to find the slope. Look up. I have to find the slope at that location. So I'm going to find the derivative. Okay. Then finding the equation of the tangent line is that there. Yeah. Flip what? Negative reciprocals. Not just flip it. Let's change the sign. So that's going to be. Still y plus 4 and still x minus 3. To flip it, I would go back to the fraction here. This is really 3 over 4, negative reciprocal, negative 4 over 3. If I add that to my graph, and why not? I'll get negative 4 over 3, bracket x minus 3, close bracket, minus 4. I'll make the pen width 3 so you can see a little bit better. And if we're lucky, Linnea, this should end up shooting right there at a perfectly right angle. It should be going like that. Booyah. So we have some very powerful tools at our disposal if we can wrap our brain around implicit differentiation. And again, what does implicit differentiation mean? Ah. Uh. I can't get the y by itself, or I'm too lazy to get the y by itself. OK. Go term by term, but any time you take the derivative of a term that has a y in it, make sure you use the chain rule to multiply by y prime. You'll often end up with more than one y prime. Get them all to one side, factor them out, divide. Zip zap. You OK there? You OK? Good. Bring it back, all right? So looking at your test outline, Christina, basic derivatives you guys are OK on. Power rule. Um, did Mr. Camozzi name it after the student that discovered it? Because I always did that too. Is it face power rule? Or, yeah, OK. I did that every year. Whichever kid spotted the pattern, we allowed them to name it after them. And I stole that from another teacher. So Mr. Camozzi stole it from me, but I stole it from another teacher. Teachers, we are the great plagiarists. As much as we tell you in English, don't plagiarize. We do all the time. Um, product rule. You OK a little bit? All right. Finding a second derivative, OK. Take a derivative and find the derivative of that. You can find a third derivative. You can find a fourth. Oh, and you have now learned for some nice physics applications. What's the derivative of displacement? Velocity, right? And what's the derivative of velocity? Acceleration. If you take the derivative of d equals vit plus a half at squared with respect to t, the first derivative will pop out with the velocity equation. And if you take the derivative of vf equals vi plus at with respect to t, the second equal derivative will give you the acceleration. What's the derivative of acceleration? A jerk. A jerk. What's the derivative of a jerk? Snap. snap. The derivative of a snap is a crackle. The derivative of a crackle. As I mentioned to Faith earlier, in math and in physics, we know how to name things, unlike biology with their stupid endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, Quotient rule. I'll be honest, I avoid the quotient rule because if you want me to divide, I can always make it a multiply by making the exponent that's on the bottom negative and bring it to the top. But if you want more practice with the quotient rule, I can do that later on or I'll do some that use it. Chain rule, chain rule, chain rule, chain rule. You have to wrap your brain around the chain rule. Then I'm looking, it says, find the equation of the normal line at a given point. You first of all find the slope, Linnea, by doing the derivative. You plug in the x and y values required to actually get the slope as a number instead of an equation. If it's the normal line, you'll take the negative reciprocal, but you'll still use what we call point-slope form. You'll use this as your format, and you'll plug in your values. Find the equation that says of the tangent line at a given point, implicit differentiation is required to get the derivative. We've just done that here. And then it says find y prime using logarithmic differentiation. So I'm going to do a couple of derivatives with logarithmic, and then I'll take specific questions. OK? And then it says uh, derivatives involving e. I wore my e-shirt yesterday. Oh, I should have worn my e-shirt today. Uh, Arctan. A to the U and ln U, and he's allowing you to have a formula sheet. You're not having to memorize them, right? Yeah, because I don't, I know, 
by the way, I know the derivative of e to the u. Rib, what's the derivative of e to the x? e to the x. <sighs> right? Okay. E is a special number. I heard, I heard over here, Simbi's, I don't even know what E means. E is a special <laughs> number. It's the only number in the universe whose slope is also its height. In other words, if you go E to the 1.6 on your calculator and get an answer, that will tell you the Y value. That's also the slope right there. And once you start to learn that in physics, slopes are handy and mean something, that is incredibly useful. If you have a number whose height is automatically its slope, you have no idea how helpful that is. And E is the only number of its type in the universe. And it's also a Scrabble tile. It's the only number that's both a Scrabble tile and oh, nothing there. Okay, nothing. <laughs> Christine, I'll give that back to you. I, I may snag it back. So let's do some logarithmic differentiation. <laughs> when do we use when do we use logarithmic differentiation when the x is an exponent when do you use logs when the x is an exponent you just finished doing logs in pre-calculus and you used log you took the log of both sides when the x was an exponent so number one y equals 2x to the power of 2x where is the x is it an exponent I'm going to have to use logarithmic differentiation. I haven't done this or taught this in about six years, so I'm dredging my memory. I may have to call on you for help or go to the textbook, but we'll find out. Logarithmic differentiation. <laughs> okay. First question is, do you recognize why I have to use logarithmic differentiation? Because the x is where? Exponent. That's your trigger. So take the log of both sides. OK. The log of y is literally going to be the log of y. Logs are tricky enough. I'm going to advise no shortcuts. Yes? Oh, you're using ln. Yeah, there is. ln of y equals. I have to handwrite it because if I do this, I'll think that's 1n. I've taught you in physics as well. You'll never see me uh, print a lowercase l, always a lowercase l. I'm saying that that particular one. Oh, mine are, ter mine are terrible. It'll get worse. And it's going to be. Oh! And it's going to be ln of, stay with me here. Mr. Duick, can't I move the exponent? No shortcuts. Too easy to make dumb mistakes. And those of you that have me know, I love shortcuts. If I say no shortcuts, I've got a really good reason for no shortcuts. Now, that 2x that's sitting up there as an exponent, now that it's inside a logarithm, a natural log, an ln. We used to just say ln, to be honest. So ln y equals ln of 2x to the 2x. Now I can move this down. And I always just drew a kind of a wiggly line to show that I was going to do that on my next line. I get this. And now you have to help me because I can't remember from your formula sheet. If I have ln of u, what's the derivative of ln of the function u? It's on your formula sheet. Read it to me. Don't say I don't know. You're not allowed to. You didn't look. You're looking for something that has an ln in it, Linnea. I won't accept that. What is it? So I'm going to write it as u prime over u. It's 1 over u times u prime, but less writing. OK? Because I've seen it written both ways. But you know me enough to know I tend to a brief. Because, because honestly, both Mr. Camozzi and I stole that formula sheet from somewhere else, because to rewrite that or retype that ourselves, we were too lazy to do that. 
I love you guys, but there's some things I'm willing to say. You can learn to multiply by one in your head on your own. Well, let me retype in this stupid sheet. Sorry. You know what? I need my... With me, so this is what we're going to be using like crazy. Are you ready? Okay. I'm even going to say if you want to put your pencils down and watch, and when I'm done, copy this because I don't want to lose you with your heads down. Not that I'm talking to anybody in particular right now. Okay. Ready? What's the derivative of ln of y? Now that exactly matches this pattern. So it's going to be on my next line. So now I'm going to go take the derivative, take the derivative. What's the derivative of ln of y? The derivative of ln of u was u prime over u. So this is going to end up being y prime over y. And I'm going to try and get that y prime by itself later because that's going to be my derivative. Equals semi for u product rule. There's a 2x and an ln of 2x. What's the product rule? Rewrite the first term times the derivative of the second term. What's the derivative of the second term? It's ln of u. What's the derivative of ln of u? u prime over u. What's u in this case? What's the derivative of 2x? over u. So that's the derivative of ln of 2x. u prime over u. Still matches the pattern. Plus derivative of the first term. What's the derivative of 2x? Rewrite the second term. I can do some nice canceling here. This one in particular was quite pretty. Is there an x on the top? Is there an x on the bottom? Is there a 2 on the top? Is there a 2 on the bottom? So I get this. y prime over y equals 2 plus 2 ln 2x. Ask. Can you read this to me out loud, please? The derivative of the ln of U. equals. U prime over U. So the derivative of the ln of y equals. Uh, just y Isn't that sit? It, doesn't this here look identical to that, except instead of so a. Y u is any function, but in this case, since it just happens to be a single letter right there, I can just say wherever there was a u in my generic version, that must be where there's going to be a y here. Okay, I'll, I'll do a more complicated one in a second. So can you hold that question for a bit? So I get that. What are you trying to get by itself? The derivative. How? Multiply the y over. Yes? Put your pencil down, look up. So don't write yet. I'll let you write all this down in a second. How will I get the y prime by itself? Times the y over. Okay. Put your pencil down, Liam. <laughs> the problem with this is on the right-hand side, it would sure be nice if I had only x's here. Wait, 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 wait. What letter is right there? What letter is right there? What letter is right there? What's y the same as? And that would give me all x's now. So my final step, I can go back to my original function. Since y equals 2x to the 2x, is that what it was? I can say, haha, the derivative is. 2x to the 2x bracket 2 plus 2 ln 2x. And now I'm going to shrink this down a tiny bit 
and if you want to write this down, you can. So this is kind of where we went with, and I'll scroll down in a second. Okay, This is logarithmic differentiation, and it's tricky. If I was going to give you any advice, Ira, no shortcuts, no shortcuts, no shortcuts. You're going to be tempted, no shortcuts, especially if you're feeling good with log rules. Don't take shortcuts. Do them meticulously. And then almost always at the very, very, very end, you'll be able to do a final you'll be able to do a final substitution and get rid of a y. Have I made a dumb mistake? No. Yeah, okay. Do we have to put the x back in? Because I have like never ever do that but then like I'll forget and it's maybe like, oh you're supposed to put it in. Okay. It, it, first of all, I, I would get clarification from your teacher whether they need it or not. Certainly, if this was linked to uh, find the slope of a tangent line question and all they gave me was an X, oh, heck yeah, because otherwise I'd have to try and find the Y value that went with this X value, which is a lot of work. That would be a logarithmic equation to try. You know what? It's going to be much more convenient if I could just put X's on my calculator. I'll get a yucky decimal, zip zap, and I'm good to go. Yeah. Here? Yes. So you could say GCF of 2 right there. And so you could. I know there's another shortcut you want me to do, but let me walk you through this. Times I could pull out a 2, 1 plus ln 2x. Can I combine this 2 with that 2? Only if the exponent is not on that 2. Is the exponent on that 2? One of you nodded. One of you said no. One of you is right. If it was on that 2, what would I have done? I would have put that whole thing inside brackets. So I can take this 2 times that 2. Final answer. Make it a 4. X... That 2x is only on the x. And then I'd probably go with a square bracket. Don't have to, but it makes it a little easier to track things for me. And then I would use a curly bracket inside there. And that comes from faith at the very beginning here. I did notice that 2x is not on that 2. If it was, it would be bracket 2x, close bracket to the 2x. Which would have probably given us a bit of a yuckier derivative, to be frank. That is logarithmic differentiation. Should we do another one? Oh, heck yeah. Again, the key idea, I'll write it one more time. You have it on your sheet. If I have the ln of something and I want to take the derivative of that, this is for you and this is for Linnea. If I have the ln of something and I want to take the derivative of it, it's going to be that over that. Let me do one with actually yuckier numbers that probably will make it actually easier, Linnea. If I had, for example, find the derivative of 2x cubed plus 5x ln of that. And they say, all right, you is this whole thing here. That's going to end up on the bottom. See the pattern? That thing ends up there. U prime is the derivative of this. What's the derivative of 2x squared plus 5x? 6x squared plus 5. I think I said 2x squared. 2x cubed plus 5x. 6x squared plus 5. That is the derivative of the ln Well, it's, it's, it's just really complicated substitution is what it is. But again, those of you that in physics have been doing some pretty complicated substitution anyways. Okay. So let's do another one. Um, see, this sheet I'm not wild about. You could take the derivatives of those logarithmically is the x an exponent? I don't think I would. Could, but I don't know if I would. 
Yeah. Like here, I would probably try and use the quotient rule. This is u, this is v, because those aren't bad ones to take derivatives of. It's a chain rule on the outside and a polynomial on the inside, and I can do polynomials in my sleep. So I would, I would not go logarithmic for that one. So let me see if I can find another one that has a good, where the x is an exponent. You pick which one you I use logarithmic differentiation when the x is an exponent. That's my trigger. I can use it other places, but the place where I got to use it is as if the x is up there as an exponent because there's no other way to get it down to ground level. So let me find another one here. Sure, I'm going to tentatively try this one. This is probably going to be fairly ugly, but maybe not. The x is an exponent. Let's try number eight. Now, they may on the test say, take the derivative logarithmically. They don't need to. Where's the x? I know there's one on ground level, but is there is an x an exponent? Gotta take the log of both sides. That's, the only, that's what you learned in pre-calc this year. And that's the only way we can deal with x's up there. And I don't know if you ever wondered, but we avoided that for your first 11 years of your education. We never put variables as exponents. Why? Because you have to develop an entirely new branch of mathematics to handle it. Okay, first thing I'm going to do very carefully, no shortcuts, is I'm going to take the log, sorry, the natural log, the ln of both sides. Somebody asked, why do I use ln and not log? Because it's a prettier derivative. On your sheet, you also have the log, L-O-G derivative, find it. It's going to be right where the ln was, I'm sure. Do you have the L-O-G one, the log one? It's yucky, look at it. Look at ln. Isn't the ln one prettier? Is the log a one? Is that one? I, log. I don't know. I don't know what your sheet is. Your speed has memorized. You have a log. No, no. You look. I'm not helping you, Linnea. You look. Is there a log derivative there? A derivative of log? Look at what you get. Is it log a? Is, help me out, folks. Is it to say log a derivative? Or does it say log u? Log base a. Log base a. Of you. Know what it says? Okay. Look at what you get for that derivative. What is it? Read it to me, please. Out loud. Go. Yuck. Yuckier derivative. So I can't remember if Faith asked. Somebody asked, why do we use ln and not log? It's a prettier derivative. Uh, really. I could do all of these with logarithms, except like, with base 10 logs. But then I got that extra ln term. Yeah! Let's use ln. Ready? So the ln of y equals the ln, and I'll go with a square bracket, and now a curly bracket, x minus 2 to the x plus 1. Close off. No shortcuts. What can I do with that x plus 1 now that it's inside a logarithm? And it's going to end up in brackets because it's that whole thing coming down. So on my next line, I'll drop the ln of y like a domino. There's going to be a bracket x plus 1. And then an ln of x minus 2. Do I have x's as exponents anymore? I can take the derivative. What's the derivative? You're awake now. What's the derivative of ln of y? Oh, you know what? Let's rewrite this. ln of u prime was u prime over u. There's my pattern. There's my template. So the ln of y, if I now on this line, I'll do it in red, take the derivative of both sides, what am I going to get? y prime over y, and y prime is what I'm going to get by itself later, 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 later. Equals, uh-oh, semi, product rule. Again, rewrite the first term, which I think is the x plus 1. Derivative of the second term, ln, where u, 
is that thing. So there is going to be an over x minus 2. And then what's the derivative of x minus 2? I'll put the 1 there, and it's going to vanish on my next line. Oh, and I'll make a little mental note. That's over 1. In fact, it's going to become x plus 1 over x minus 2 because it's times 1 times 1. <laughs> so rewrite the first term, derivative of the second term, plus derivative of the first term. What's the derivative of x plus 1? Oh, I like that. Am I going to bother writing that? No. Uh, rewrite the second term, ln of x minus 2. Before I do much more, I'll just tidy up that middle fraction. y prime over y equals x plus 1 over x minus 2 plus ln x minus 2. How would I get the y prime by itself? Come on, people. How would I get the y prime by itself? Not divide. Oh, did somebody say divide? Or did it say the multi multiply the y over, right? Ready? Here's the only shortcut I ever allowed myself. Except, what's y the same as? So that whole sucker there is going to drop right there. You want the derivative of this puppy? What was it? x minus 2 to the x plus 1. x minus 2 to the x plus 1 times x plus 1 over x minus 2 plus the natural log, the ln, the ln. Let's see if we're right. So once you've written that down, this one did have an answer key, if I recall. For number 8, did we get x minus 2 to the x plus 1, bracket x plus 1 over x minus 2 plus ln x minus 2, close bracket? Booyah. Now, if I, I have to do some serious number crunching. This is where I can't make this up. I could now ask you to find a tangent line. I could say, what's the tangent line when x equals 3? You would put a 3 there, and there, and there, and there and there on your calculator, you would get a y value to go with it. And now you could use y minus y1 equals m x minus x. You could. Meh. I say meh. Well, maybe I could make this work out evenly going up here. Um, sure. I guess I could put in like a, a 1 or a 2 or a 3. That's not too hideous. I could do that. Because 3 minus 2 is 1 to the third power. Is Because if I put a 3 there or 1 to the fourth, that would work. But Okay. Is that okay for logarithmic, or did you want me to do one more of those? We're going to get there in a second. But is that okay for logarithmic, or is that okay? Do you mean a logarithmic that has trig in it, or just a trig derivative? Well, you know what? I'll make one up. Uh, suppose we had this. Y equals X to the sine X. There. Yeah, it's a, cl it's a classic. Where is the X? Is it the X as an exponent? Take a log of both sides. Going to get good at them. I've made this speech before, but I'll say it again. You can make an argument that the invention of the logarithm in mathematics is one of the top five most important inventions of the Industrial Revolution. It's not a coincidence that once they had that and calculus, the Industrial Revolution started because now we could do math not by guessing. In other words, if you ever wondered before we had calculators, how do we find a fifth root or an x to the twelfth? Logs. You can turn anything into a log question. You may have seen... In fact, I have one here because I'm a nerd. Where are you? Ah, yeah. You may have seen the old slide rules. These are from the 50s and 40s. This is a log table very cleverly put onto a ruler. And all the math that you do with your graphing calculators, all of it can be done on this. Brilliant little invention.
I don't know what we're going to do it anyways because I'm a nerd. Uh, take the ln of y equals the ln of x to the sine x. I can now move that to the front. I'll get ln of y equals sine x ln of x. Take the derivative of both sides. What's the derivative of ln of y? Now, by the way, they don't have to just make this a plain old y. They could bring in implicit differentiation here too. They can make it like a 5y squared or something like that. I don't think they will. That's a little overkill, but I can handle it. It's just going to add about four more lines, he says casually. Uh, so now... Take the derivative of both sides. The derivative of ln of y is y prime over y. Once again, Simi, we have a product rule. Sine x and ln of x. Rewrite the first term. Derivative of the second term. It's going to be u on the bottom, which is going to be the x, times the derivative of x. So you know what? Because I can erase, I would now say, oh, it ends up being that. Plus, derivative of the first term. What's the derivative of sine? Isn't that almost mathematical poetry when you learn that? Because the derivative of sine could have been so ugly. Could have been so ugly. Really, it's just cos? Of course it is. Rewrite the second term. You have to go? Did you write this down, or do you want me to print it up? Or if you email me, I can send you a PDF. For... Um, I wrote it. Okay. Um, yeah. We'll do a few more, because then I'll take specific questions from the homework. Um, now what? Got to get the y prime by itself. So you'll notice, by the way, we do always end up with an implicit differentiation here anyways. You got to get the y prime by itself. Times by y, the only shortcut I ever allowed myself. What's y the same as? So we're going to get this. y prime equals x to the power of sine x bracket sine x over x plus cos x ln x. Ta-da. What about e to the x? And those ones. Is that on the test too? Okay. So, suppose we had something like this. Y equals 4 to the 3x squared plus 2. No, hang on. Let me pause for a second. I apologize. That's going to be another logarithmic. We just did that. What was that? Oh, okay. Can you read to me the a to the u? Uh, so you have a to the u. What's the derivative of that? What does it say? You can't uh, can't go a u. That's battleship. B five. That's battleship. It's either a to the something. Yep. A and then times u prime. Yeah. I always stuck the u prime in the front just so I wouldn't accidentally put it inside the ln. That was me being, because you know me enough to know, any chance I can avoid to make dumb mistakes, I'll tweak my writing to make, and that was one I was the king of. So I would have the ln of x and then a 5 on the end, and I would say, oh, it's a 5x. No, that x was in the ln, the 5 was tacked on. So I do it that way. Okay. So let's suppose we had this. y equals... 6, and then u is a function, huh, sine x squared. And they say, 
take the derivative. We could do this from scratch. We could solve this logarithmically. In fact, we've been doing that up until now, taking the log of both sides. Why would I take the log of both sides? Where is the x? However, you have this handy-dandy schmandy little pattern here. Maybe I can use this as a shortcut. Let's see. Apparently, this is going to be u prime a to the u ln of a. Here, I would probably make a list. What's sitting where the a is in my question? What's sitting where the u is in my question? And while we're at it, what's u prime? Two, chain rule. Rewrite what's inside times the derivative of what was inside. Yes? Well, now let's plug in Chuck. Okay, uh, apparently it's going to be, this is why I often put the u prime in the front because I didn't want a bunch of stuff. I like the log to be last. That's totally me, not a textbook. Uh, u prime two sine x cos x a to the u ln a I'll just put that in brackets just to kind of separate things out a bit although I don't think the brackets are required it might make it a little easier to read now, if we had done that by taking the log of both sides, on the left-hand side, we would have ended up eventually with a y prime over y. We would have multiplied the y over to get the y by itself. We would have substituted the y out. We would have ended up with this line here. Now, can you see where the y would have been substituted out? It would have, it would have been right there. Sorry, I have to do this online so we can see. The y would have ended up, when we do that little y substitution, would have ended up right there. So it's exactly what we've been doing this just gives you a lovely shortcut template. But it honestly, it's, it's redundant. So it's like up to you to choose what you want to do it, basically? Sure. I, I can't imagine he's going to take marks off if you don't use the method that he suggests. I, I always, like, again, I hate the quotient rule. I'm not great at it. I turned any quotient question into a product question because the product rule I can do in my sleep. Right? I can turn any division question into a multiplying question by just doing the reciprocal. <laughs> Done. And that was just I also cut down on my memorization, and you know me enough to know I hate memorizing stuff. Okay. Uh, e to the x. Yep. Yeah. I can do it if you want, but I'm also sensing you're all getting tired, and we want some more details. But yeah, oh yeah, totally. See, some people's attention span is wandering just a little bit there. Squirrel! Okay. What's the derivative of this if you have y equals e to the x? It's beautiful. And again, going back to Simi. Or maybe it was Linnea who said, I don't understand what e to the x is. e to the x is a lovely number. It gives you that graph there. And the reason it's so lovely is if you pick a point right there, the height right there is also the slope. And it's even better. You don't know this yet, but I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. The area is also the height is also the slope. It's the only number in the universe whose height and slope and area are all the same. And those of you that are in physics who are starting to realize that areas are useful and mean something, like we're doing in our potential energy, and slopes are useful and mean something, like last year, um, that's hugely useful whenever you can if you're doing some research with some sort of, sort of statistical thing. If you can convert it to base E, you will, even if it's a lot of work, because in the long run, it's so much nicer to work with. Okay. 
as the number E is 2.71828, and then it goes all wonky. It looks like it's going to repeat because you see 2.7182818, and you think, oh, does it go 2818? No, right off your calculator screen, it goes all loopy. So it's like pi in that it's, it's an irrational, non-repeating number. Fact, on the 18th of this month, it's E day, because it's 218. We have pi day on March 14th, but E day is 218. What, what if what if instead of e to the x, I have e to the u? You have that on your sheet as well. What's the derivative of e to the u? It's e to the u, u prime, or u prime, e to the u, yeah? I don't know which way they wrote it. I always put the u prime in front because I didn't like having something after an exponent. So if you happen to see an e, to, this is why base ln, which is base e, uh, is so nice. Gives us, uh, when we use the ln for our logarithms, it gives us much nicer derivatives. I'll take that. And, oh, when you have an exponential base of e, it gives you also gorgeous derivatives. So specific questions from the homework and or quizzes and or whatever, now is your chance to ask. I'll pause the video for one second while people are looking for stuff. A little practice with uh, inverse trig functions. So we have arc sine, arc cos, and arc tan. That's the fancy terminology for inverse sine or inverse cos or inverse tan. And it's typically written on your calculator as a little negative one, which is a stupid symbol because that negative one looks like an exponent, but it's not an exponent. It's a symbol for inverse. It's one of the biggest screw-ups in all of mathematics. If I was president of math for one day, I would change the inverse symbol. They should have used a Greek letter there for inverse. Greek letter I would come to mind if they really wanted to. Right? It, it, it is really a problem because this is 1 over x, but this is not 1 over sine. Stupid. We're not consistent. Well, we're supposed to know that because the negative 1 is after a function, it's not behaving like an exponent. It's behaving like an inverse symbol. We could have done better. So let's try a few of these. And again, you don't need to memorize these. There are some teachers that make you memorize them. Thank you, Mr. Camozzi, for not doing that. So uh, here's an example. This is kind of uh, typed poorly in my mind. I would always put the thing inside the trig function in brackets so it's obvious. So if you don't mind, I'm going to do that. What I would t target is the fact that this is arc cos, inverse cos. So I would go trundling off to my formula sheet, and I would say, do I have an inverse cos? Do I have an inverse cos somewhere? Maybe I just picked exactly the one you don't have. On the bottom, on the second page, if you flip it, there's a box at the bottom that says derivative of the inverse to the right. Ah, there it is. Okay. So it says this. I'm going to do a little fakery here. It says the derivative, instead of an x, I'm going to put a u there so I can generalize, of cosine of negative 1 of u. It's going to be 1 minus u squared. See how I cleverly did that? I replaced the x with the u. And I know the chain rule says you would also end up multiplying by u prime. This is how you can take a derivative for x and turn it into a generic derivative for u. Is there a, a, a derivative for u of that one? It's not complete. Yeah. It's oh, you know what? Ha! Negative. Jeez, that would have been dumb. Is that right? Okay. So... I learned how to do this a long time ago. I said, if you give me the derivative with respect to x, 
I know the chain rule says if I replace the x with a function, all the chain rule says is make sure you multiply by the derivative of the function at the end. So where you have x's, I put a u, and I multiplied by the derivative of the function at the very, very end. Don't let it freak you out. Here's our pattern. What's u? And I find for complicated derivatives, I will do careful substitution. So in this case, u is negative 5x cubed. I look at my template, my pattern. I have a u. Oh, I also have a u prime. What's u prime? If you want me to find y prime, it's going to be negative, negative 15x squared. What's a minus minus the same as? I'll take care of that later. Are you positive? <laughs> All over the square root of 1 minus negative 5x cubed squared. There's... Let me pause. Do you see the substitution that I did? I'm not writing this terribly neatly, and I regret starting with arc cos, which seems to be the only one that you don't have a u version of. By the way, uh, on your sheet, on the back page, see tangent? So, sorry, see arctan? On the front page, look at arctan with the u, and notice it's identical, except they've replaced the x with a u, and on the top, there's a u prime, because that's the chain rule. There's a quick way to change an x derivative into a u derivative. Uh, what's a minus minus the same as? What's a minus minus the same as? And it's this whole thing. Oh, sorry, I was a little bit sloppy here. The squared goes on the x, not on the 15, yes? So it's going to be 15x squared all over the square root of one minus, it looks like I have a negative squared. What's a negative squared, please? Yeah, so that negative, that second negative, that one in front of the five is gonna vanish. What's a five squared? What's an x cubed squared? Right, x cubed times x cubed x. So I'm going to end up with this minus dropping down like a domino, this minus vanishing, that's y prime. I wonder if we're right. That was number one. Did we get? 15x squared all over the square root of 1 minus 25x squared? We did! Cool. Neato. Benito. Uh, let's see if I can find another one. This one said it had derivatives of inverse trig functions and chain rules and stuff. Okay, let's avoid arc cos because you guys don't have that one as a u. Let's try uh, this one here, arc tan. So here's my original function. Dunk. Make it a little bit bigger. Dunk. Find y prime. All right. You have this on your formula sheet, but I'll stick this in the notes. Uh, arctan, so the derivative of the inverse tan of u is what's on the bottom of the fraction on the other side from your formula sheet. Yep. What's on the top of the fraction? There is a 1 and a u prime. I'm just going to put the u prime right there. I think that's a dumb way to write it. I would just... Why would you have something next to a fraction when you could have just one fraction? 
That's the template. Yes, Ira? So now, very meticulously, in this question, what's you? I don't know. What's you with you? <laughs> Sorry. What's you? I know. Oh, they only get worse. Pardon me? So u equals 3x. And I also notice in my template, not only is there a u, there's a u prime. In your head, please, for the love of God. Yep. And now it's straight substitution. Complicated substitution, but it's substitution. What's y prime? u prime, 3, all over 1 plus u squared. How would I write that 3x all squared on my next line? Not next square, yeah. So on my next line, I'm going to write this as, and this is what you're, if this was multiple choice or you're looking in the back of the book, they would write it as. So these are the inverse trig function derivatives, and they really are more pattern substitution than anything else. And don't be scared to, in the margin, jot this down like I do still to this day every time and just do a careful meticulous substitution. Let's do a really ugly one, just cause. Let's do a, I'll make one up. Which one haven't I used yet? I haven't used sine yet. So let's do y equals the inverse sine of cos of 3x squared. And they want us to find y prime. Okay. You have this formula on your sheet, but I'll jot it down here. Apparently, d by du of inverse sine of u is u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. By the way, make sure you copy or substitute meticulously and carefully, because it's not like we can't make a dumb mistake there. Um, okay. In this question, then, what's u? Cosine of 3x squared. Yes? What's du, or u prime? Okay. Negative sine, rewrite what's inside, times the derivative of what's inside. Technically times the derivative of x, if you continue the chain rule, but the derivative of x is just one and we quit there. Okay, now it's just gonna be substituted into there. So here's my answer. U prime. Uh, if it's okay with you, with that negative, I'm going to tuck the 6x with it at the front. And then I'll write the sine of 3x squared. I should change colors so this stands out a bit better. Sorry, let's try that again. I'll go black. So here is y prime. It says u prime. I'm going to write the negative and the 6x and then the trig function. And on the bottom, apparently there's going to be a square root. There's going to be a 1, there's going to be a minus, and then there's going to be a something inside a squared. What's going to be inside the squared? You. Me? No. You. What's you? Oh, the squared goes on the x. And I don't think you can simplify that any further or anything like that. So I'd quit there. So really, again, there are some calculus classes and teachers out there who make the kids memorize all these. But most of them are probably, you know, biology teachers. Never mind, that's what they're. Um, I just don't like memorizing stuff. I think it's a waste of time. But if you can find the pattern on here, great. And you're hopefully now seeing why ln is a much nicer log for calculus than base 10 log, you just get prettier derivatives. And that's really, you get prettier derivatives. 
but also the fact that E, which is LN is base E, is such a unique number. It's the only number in the universe whose height and slope and area are all going to give you the same value. Uh, you'd have to use your, yeah, yeah. So log with nothing is assumed to be base 10, the common base. Log base 2 is base 2, log base 3. If you want to do log base E, you can write log base E, but because it's the natural log of the universe, we have a special symbol for that, and it's from the French. It's the log natural, LN, and that's base E. Yep. Or log. And then you get all sorts of calculus jokes, right? And so you can come up with questions where the answer ends up being log cabin. We have giggle, giggle, giggle. Or there's another question that we used to do where the answer ended up being lawn mower. And, and you, you, so we used to have some fun with that as well. I showed you the limit calculus joke, right? We won't put that one on YouTube. <laughs> Is that all right? Was there any other questions? or What did you test? Okay. I am not available tomorrow after school. I am during my flex if you want to hit me up. Monday flex. I'm sorry, I'm closed. So it's my block A flex, and I, I'm just behind. i got to get your guys' physics 12 tests created. We're going by a black hole, because why not? But the problem is when I'm making up the numbers right now, they're so fantastically big. I, I, I'm trying to think of a way on your test to hint at you, relax. You're going to get big numbers, but I don't want to not go by a black hole because they're so cool.